Vitor at this point was just an absolute animal. You need to have a bit of a reality check, I think, sometimes. EPO is really difficult to try and detect. It looks like a bit of a balloon animal. With anti-doping, it's not black and white. There's all these other factors that go in. That's what could happen if you were to come off everything. Look at him. He is an absolute gorilla. But yeah, probably is TRT use. So my name's Tom Coffin, I'm a performance nutritionist and I'm also an anti-doping educator. What's up fight fans, Tommy here, this is a unique one, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid couldn't come at a better time with the UFC shows drying up until next year. So why not kill some time and some epic dungeon bosses by getting stuck into Raid Shadow Legends with a new legendary champion based on MMA and pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey. To celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, use the special promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of helpful stuff that will help level up your Ronda so she's at the top of her game. So how do you get Ronda? Well, she's free right now. Whether you're new or a longtime player, just log in to Raid and play for seven days between now and February 28th and Ronda's yours. It's mobile and PC, it's free to download and play, and we'll have you going five five-minute rounds with multiple champions. Ronda's an absolute monster on the battlefield. She's got a bunch of multi-hit skills, making her perfect for taking on bosses like the Fire Knight. Better yet, her second skill blocks both active and passive skills, making her perfect for shutting down those super tough arena teams. And lastly, if you're a new player, be sure to scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack worth almost $30, a free champion Virgies, and this cool in-game loot. You will find your rewards in your inbox for the the next 30 days. More information in the description below. To study anything rigorously like this that has a massive ethical component, it can be really difficult to actually get those studies approved and to do them properly, and especially long-term studies. You're never gonna get a an institute that's gonna say, okay, this is fine, let's do this. We might not ever see any research on the long-term effects of particular steroids. With anti-doping, it's not just about abiding by the rules and not abiding by the rules. It's not black and white. There's all these other factors that go in, like the education behind these athletes. Do they actually know how to make the right choices in the first place? Vitor at this point was just an absolute animal. Incredible fight IQ with this body that can do almost whatever he needs it to. If you look at your natural testosterone production throughout the day, it will sort of undulate and you'll go through cycles of having spikes and then it will be lower. Whereas if you're artificially putting your testosterone levels at a constant through testosterone replacement therapy, they'll just be constantly elevated throughout the day and they won't have those periods of low. So that's got so many extra benefits when it comes to athletes athletic performance, you'll have stuff like increased muscle protein synthesis, which is the muscle building process. You'll get stronger and bigger at the same time, but there's also an incredible mindset situation, which is there's an increased drive to perform and to compete and to train. And that's what might result in something like this happening, where you have someone who is slightly older in VTOR becoming an absolute animal. He looks smooth, doesn't he? He's obviously older too, so that probably plays into it, but now that he's outside of um, the USADA testing pool, he's almost gone back to what he was in those first few clips. That sort of goes to show he was doing something, he wasn't doing something, and now he's doing that thing again. What that is exactly, it's difficult to say, but yeah, probably is TRT use. His traps are just huge, and his biceps as well are just... He looks like a bit of a balloon animal. He's just unbelievably technical at the same time, and when you combine that with testosterone replacement therapy that might give you all these additional benefits, you see the reasons why some people would choose to do that. Everyone has their own genetic profile. They'll react to things in a totally different way. However, some of those signs, like almost looking like a cartoon character, that's certainly something to spark a bit of interest there. I suppose one of the things with testosterone testosterone though and you see in these guys that are building so much muscle there's always that question as to is it actually practical and is it benefiting their performance traps just completely <laughs> just gone completely from where they were before that leads you to believe that it was because of the TRT use the reason why he looked like that or the horse meat I mean Look at him, he is an absolute gorilla. Before a lot of these compounds were 
created or these methods were used. There are a few pictures of bodybuilders back in the day that sole purpose was to build as much muscle and as much strength as, as they can. That almost gives you a reference point of this could be achievable naturally. There's no definitive answer with this. It's more just suggestions and something to generate a bit of thought of, of yourself. As far as, let's say, I'm concerned, because I, I enjoy going to the gym and I see someone like Brock Lesnar and I, say, I think, oh, I want to be like him one day. You need to have a bit of a reality check, I think, sometimes, because not everyone's won the genetic lottery, let's say, if that is the case with Brock Lesnar. It's difficult to say whether you can achieve his physique naturally. He might be able to. I certainly wouldn't be able to. Not to mention I'm like five foot seven. He's obviously a bit bigger. It's funny seeing Chell like this because he's so much of a personality these days as well. When you see him stepping on the scale with this gaunt face, it almost does look like a bit of a different person. You know, some people just have more spots than others. But certainly it could be maybe an indicator of some hormonal imbalances. It, it would be interesting to see if this was something that occurred and then went away again, because that could be an indicator that there was something that was implemented at this time in his life, and it's possibly been taken away since then. There were so many things going around about what, what is the reason behind the uh, gynecomastia that we're seeing here, or, or gyno as it's commonly referred to. Again, one of the main reasons for this is due to hormonal imbalances. Around, uh, I think it's up to 25% of gyno can be caused just by medications. There are a number of factors that can affect testosterone levels. So he's obviously just come off a fight camp, high training volumes, potentially not got the best sleep, potentially not had the best diet as well. All these things can potentially affect your testosterone. There's a genetic component to the outcome of gyno as well. So if let's say Israel Adesanya is more genetically prone to it, he's unfortunately had these compounding circumstances that has led to a decrease in testosterone. That could potentially be a reason. However, there's also the other side of things if you want to look at it skeptically, which is if someone cycling off because they're coming into a test, this could occur as well. So EPO will naturally increase your red blood cell count and amount of oxygen that can go to your working muscles. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of athletes want to use it. Usman is known for his unbelievable cardio, his relentless approach to fighting. And so it could definitely be useful for him in terms of physical signs of EPO use. EPO is really difficult to try and detect. An even more difficult thing to detect is the transfusion of your own blood. That is taking the blood out of your body. That then ramps up the production of blood in your body. So again, really improves that shuttling of hemoglobin, oxygen to the muscles, and then putting that blood back in so you've almost got too much and that you can imagine is really difficult to detect because you're taking something out of the body that belongs there and then putting it back in that's why you see wada banning ivs and things like this in camp He's such a beast. I mean, he does look like a professional wrestler. He could step onto one of those stages and do well, or even a bodybuilding competition. When he was being interviewed, he said, I have used steroids, but I'm not on steroids, or something strange like that. It was a bit of a Tito Ortiz moment, to be honest. If we look at Ken here, he's still in great nick for someone that's in his 50s. If he's done something previously like TRT, that will have an effect on his body's natural production of that. If you start doing something, then you have to do that for the rest of your life. You see it in bodybuilders as well, like Paul Dillette. He was one of the biggest bodybuilders, but he completely came off everything, and you see what he looks like now. He's completely different. That's what could happen if you were to come off everything completely. It's certainly worth trying to understand the positives of anti-doping, which is trying to clean up the sport, but also the other side of things. Is it ethical? Is it practical? What does it mean for the athletes?